day. The best thing that they recorded. All right, good evening, everyone. The time is 7.30. I'll now call this meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the next item is the approval of minutes from our regular meeting on December 7th. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? I make a motion we approve the minutes. Thank I'll you. second that motion. Thank you, John. Uh, any, any errors, changes, or omissions? I didn't see any. I had a little bit. Great. We'll see. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. I do want to point out we're, we're missing our recording secretary this evening. I don't know where Sharon is. I was under the impression that she would be here, so we'll have to uh, use the recording to do the minutes afterwards. So it won't be a problem, but I did want to make note of that. Uh, the next item is the acceptance of tonight's agenda. I don't have any changes this evening, so I'll entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion we approve the agenda. I'll Thank second you, John. it. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Uh, under communications and correspondence, I have a, a few items to share with everyone this evening. Uh, the first is uh, last week I uh, was able to attend the Portland's Cub Scout Pac-2 uh, Arrow of Light Award. This is their blue and gold banquet where the Cub Scouts graduate from the Cub Scouts and enter into the Boy Scouts. And I. I, I just want to congratulate those who crossed over and their families. It was a wonderful ceremony, and so I really want to just say uh, congratulations to Orson Felter, Samuel Hess, Gabriel uh, Nigeri, Anthony Killis, Zachary Robert, and Noah Sterry. And we had a proclamation on behalf of the uh, entire Board of Selectmen. So uh, thank you all. Uh, great. The, other, the next item is, uh, Mike's not here this evening, Mike Hernandez, but last meeting he asked me about the rumble strips that were going to be installed. I shared that email with everyone. So I did hear back from DOT, and it seems that uh, the delay in those center line rumble strips was due to a change in vendor. And it was supposed to be last year, but they are anticipating installation in the spring of 2023 on Route 17, which is Glastonbury Turnpike, where they paved. So that should be coming uh, early in the spring, hopefully. Uh, so I think Mike knows about that. So that's a good thing. Uh, and then the other item I wanted to share is I received a letter from DECD. Now you may recall that we had applied for another round of grant funding <coughs> for our Brownstone Avenue project, this, these brownfield sites. And we applied for, um, I believe we asked for yep 1.5 million to fully complete all of the uh, all of the uh, remediation, uh, particularly with 222 and 230, uh, and the bulk of that money would need to be spent on paving asphalt, which would cap the site. I think that's really where the the bulk of the expense comes from in this. But um, so DCD uh, informed us in this letter that our our application didn't score as high as some of the others, and the primary reason for that is that uh, DCD believes that we will do better once we have a developer in place. And they did give us a soft award of $500,000 uh, to go towards 248 Brownstone Avenue, which will complete the remediation of 248. However, the stipulation is that we must get a uh, third party, a private entity signed on board before DCD uh, re releases those funds to us. <clears throat> so early in the, in the new year, we'll be going out with another RFP and you know, certainly uh, we wanna move forward with this project and I, I thank DCD uh, for, for their evaluation and uh, also their feedback and I look forward to continuing to work with them on this. So uh, some you know, bittersweet news here, but, um, but I think we still have a great project and we're gonna move forward with it. Uh, Ryan, I got one question. With this,
part of the remediation? Are they taking down the building that's in the center of the property? They are not, no. Okay. No. Okay. Um, and then lastly, under communications and correspondence, I heard, actually was it, I think it was Monday, that we are now, the town of Portland has officially become a recovery friendly community. Uh, I, we received confirmation from Justin Meal, and he is with the Department of Mental Health for the state of Connecticut. And so that's really great news. I know uh, Jesse Ravicki is having a meeting right downstairs right now with, um, with, his, uh, with the recovery group uh, here in town. And so I just wanna thank all of them for their continued work on this. And you know we have some ways to go, but I think that's great. And thank you all for signing on board. So lots of communications uh, this evening. All right. Uh, Can I uh, yep. just interject? I just realized I, I saw this earlier tonight and I made a copy of it. When we approved the minutes, there was something from Michelle that said there was a Scrivener's error Ooh. on the minutes yep. and we needed to make an amendment. To, do we need to do that now or can we wait? I think, why don't you, hmm. yeah, why don't you, what was the, I, I remember that. Um, it said that due to a Scrivener's error on the resolution, fourth quarter transfers, the budgetary line item number for gas and diesel the number was wrong. It was 01055000501, not 01055570001. So we just need to make that change. We'll just enter it into the record for tonight's okay. meeting. That 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 it was a it was a. Okay. Uh, when Tom wrote it, he yep. wrote a seven, and I think it got interpreted as I a agree. one. I think that's what. But um, but the account was the same okay. account. Yes, so. I just want to make sure. Thank we you. Yeah, that. I appreciate that, John. Thank you. Uh, all right, so we'll move on to public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to say anything? Anyone else? Nothing in the chat. Nothing in the chat? Okay. Uh, it is the second meeting of the month. I'm not sure if anyone from the, uh, oh, oh, from the Committee on Solidarity, are you here for the, you're here for the report? Would you like to come up, Hope? Yes, please. <coughs> Hope is the new chair of the Solidarity Committee. Oh, very, so congratulations. very nice to meet you. Congratulations. Okay. Um, I just have a short report. I'm not sure how much I should say or how much not to say. Um, thank you. So we had our meeting on the 13th at uh, the Waverly Center. We had six members present, plus Ryan was there. And uh, we recently lost three members, but we've gained two members now. So we have two more spots to fill, and um, that'll, be, that'll be finished. Um, we decided that we were going to do a rotating chairman, and so I will be chairman until April, and then Aaron um, Livingspanger, I think. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> she will take over, and we are also going to have a vice chairman. So Aaron will be the vice chairman, and then when she becomes the chairman, we'll elect a new vice chairman, just so everyone can get a chance to be in that mm -hmm. position. And um, we are also going. We had talked about having a Zoom component, um, but it looks like we'll just have the speakerphone for uh, one of our members that can't be at the meetings but she'd like to participate. So um, we have a new email account that Christy Fuller set up for the committee. It's uh, Portland, Connecticut, solidarity at gmail.com. So um, I don't know if, does everything go through Michelle for us or? You what know, what do you, in, in what regard? As far as like if, if would this email be used by any of the board members? Not no. us, no. Okay. So it would be used by the, by the Solidarity Committee and, and that would be, you know, when you have minutes to send out or the agenda, that's, that's how we would reach out to you and, and you know, make sure, uh, you know, if, we're, if we haven't gotten the minutes and, you know, and we're looking right. for them, that's, that's how we would contact you through that. Okay, okay. Um, Now, we're also going to do a sign-up sheet for attending these meetings, the Board of Selectmen meetings, so each person can also get a chance to be here and meet everybody, and so you'll get to know them as well. Um, and we were also wondering if there's a particular person 
we should contact on the board on that's on the board as a liaison mm -hmm. or I think um, Mike Hernandez had been the liaison previously. Okay. So, and Ralph, were you kind of a liaison? Not team? for this one. Not for this he, one. But it was Mike. Mike's yeah. been yeah. consistently there. Yeah. I know he's kind of been away for a couple. Of, could have been away for the last meeting. I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, he's still going to be the liaison. Yeah. yeah, I would say Mike Hernandez, and okay. uh, certainly, you know, you can always email me as well if uh, you know. Okay. Um. Now, next uh, January, we're bringing final changes to our resource pamphlet. So that'll be coming through pretty soon um, for printing. Uh, uh, the library, as you know, I'm sure, is going to be under construction. So that might affect our meetings. Um, uh, you mean the senior center? The senior center. Yes. Okay. What did I say? You said the library. <laughs> oh. <but> <laughs> we're not at the library. OK. <laughs> Um, so we may have to change places, you know, rapidly, because she says she won't even know, maybe 24 hours, so we'll have to be in close contact with her. So in January, we're going to start planning for this upcoming year, and we're also interested in any ideas that the board may have that, um, you know, you've been thinking about that, or that would be good for the town of Portland. Um, relative to our purpose. And then um, just that last year's events included a disability forum, community survey and community forum, a pride rally, a Juneteenth celebration and a first responders month. So um, that's something we're gonna work on in January. And the banners this year were, were great too. Yeah. Now the banners were the those the little flags that were put in on um, well there was the, but the banners main that went street up, um, on, on the poles, poles on the poles and on, on main poles. street mm -hmm. okay we're actually looking for those banners I think public works, works probably has those okay yeah because they I put them up and take them down yeah, yeah. Put them, yep. oh okay that's good to know that's pretty much all I have to say um, any questions comments. <laughs> uh, I like Hope said I attended the, the meeting last week and they have a good group and uh, you guys have uh, are doing a good job and last year was busy and I know you have some fun stuff uh, planned for uh, this year or coming down but like I told them I said don't think you have to do as much as last year you know uh, we just rather you know want you guys to uh, you know enjoy it and, and yeah uh, yeah I think we're gonna you know certainly try to um, spread the wealth as far as working goes and have everyone participate so it's not quite as hefty for one person. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it. Thank you. Hope. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <coughs> All right. The next item on this <coughs> evening's agenda is our Board of Selectmen meeting calendar year. For 2023 it's back again with a potential change so we had discussed at the last meeting changing the start time of our Board of Selectmen meetings from 730 p.m. to 7 p.m. there seemed to be a consensus among the board uh, unless any unless anyone has changed their, their That's right 630 What's it? <laughs> well, we're not all retired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve this calendar as amended? I'll make Bobby a motion. Should. Okay, so uh, Bobby uh, and Sean I'll seconded. Yep. Okay. Uh, any discussion on this? Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All the dates look good and everything yep. again. All right. With that, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. See you all at 7 o'clock then on January 4th. Just keep that in mind. Remember that. All right. The next, uh, next item is appointments <coughs> and reappointments to boards and commissions. Bobby, do you have appointments tonight? Uh, yes, we have one. Okay. It's for the appointment for Jim Motes. For the Ethics Commission. I'll second that. All right. Thank you both. 
Uh, any discussion on Jim Motes for ethics? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. All right, and Ralph? Yes, I would like to put uh, Deb Hallis for, uh, well, she's currently on the Housing Authority and uh, would be to extend her term on that uh, commission. I'd like to put her forward. I'll second yes. the motion. All right. Any discussion on, on Deb? Deb has a lot of background in that area. Deb. Yes. Deb's yeah. very, very useful on that. Mm -hmm. And she's been doing a good job on yeah. it. So, uh, All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, Aye. any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Yeah. And I have one other one uh, I'd like to put forward. Um, Donald Roy for the, uh, the current, uh, recently vacated ethics commission position. Um, Don is um, uh, just some background. Uh, the people may not know him. He's, he's retired from the building trades. He is both a Eucharistic minister and a choir member at St. Mary's. Um, he hasn't served on any boards and commissions, which um, for this particular commission is, a, is, a, is probably a good thing. That's, and he's not, not been politically active, which is also very much part of being on the code of, I mean, on the ethics commission. So I'm putting him forward. All right. Uh, motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Sean. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Yep. All right, uh, and that's it? That is it. All right, so we will move on to new business. So uh, in your packets this evening, there is a, uh, there is a resolution to, this is uh, the boilerplate type resolution that we need in order for uh, myself to be able to sign the documents for the grant that we received for on our sidewalk project on Main Street. So you may recall we received a steep grant back in September for $400,000 uh, and this will be used for sidewalk replacement which will be starting on Arvid Road and going north towards, I'm hoping that we'll get to Gildersleeve you know, depending on how far fun, funds can uh, go with this, but it's a great project, uh, I feel, and, uh, and with that, we need to have this resolution so, uh, so that we can enter into the agreement with the state. So would someone like to make the motion? It would be, it would be the title, and then start with resolved. I could, I could do that. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, authorizing resolution of the Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, December 21st, 2022. Resolved that the Town of Portland may enter into with and deliver to the State of Connecticut Department of Transportation any and all documents which it deems to be necessary and appropriate for a grant of $400,000 for the Main Street sidewalk replacement. And be it further resolved that Ryan J. Curley as first selectman of the Town of Portland is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the Town of Portland and to do and perform all acts and things which he deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents. I'll second that motion. All right. Um, motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on this? No. 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 All right. Let's keep moving down Main Street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you all. It would be interesting if you could track foot walkers mm. like you track car travel like over the bridge because mm -hmm. the number of people that walk on main street like mm -hmm. on a summer evening is unbelievable well you can't track it we do track the airline trail they have yeah. that that yeah, we do. clicker yeah. so we we would be able to do yeah. that just it's a lot of people yeah. and i have a feeling that once we replace the sidewalks It'll we'll have more. even more people on there yeah, yeah. they won't be on the road <laughs> they won't be on the road so <laughs> that's a good thing uh, all right, so moving on to refunds of excess <coughs> payments. I think there's only uh, well, two uh, this evening. Would someone like to make that motion? Sure, why not? Make a motion for refund of excess payment for Thomas E. Wilcox, Jr. for $578.28 and $571.27. Aye. I will second that. Thank you both. Uh, any discussion on that? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Uh, all right, moving along <laughs> to status and committee reports. I have a few things I just want to go through quickly before I turn it over to Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I want to let you all know that we're using approximately $1,000 of contingency for speed bumps to be installed at our senior center right when you turn on from Waverly into the senior center. Uh, we think it's a good idea to have speed bumps there. Right now there's not. And with you know, senior citizens and, and people so walking. It'll be before the entryway to the building. Before yes. the ramps. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So I just wanted to let you guys know that, that we were going to be doing that. Um, another item to let you all know, the, the ARPA projects, our water project and our sewer project, both RFQs uh, are out. Uh, for the engineering for both of those projects so we finally got our answer that because it's federal money it's it's best to go out to bid for everything and you know to cross our T's and and just to double check everything so we have to go out to bid for engineering as opposed to just using our town engineer as we typically do for for projects when are those due back by uh, January 16th I believe okay. uh, it's a Wednesday I know <coughs> that and uh, so both projects are out. We're excited to uh, to move forward. It might be the 18th, <coughs> actually. So, but that's good. So I want to thank uh, Ryan O'Halpin, our public works director, and Tom Robinson, uh, both for for their work with this. And also, uh, Ryan O'Halpin is is finalizing the the alarms for the town garage as well. He's been working uh, with Tom on that, and we have the drawings, and that should be going very very soon as well. So that's that's next on on the deck and it's uh, already almost there. So I just wanna, I know it's important, it's a topic uh, near and dear <laughs> to everyone's hearts here. So uh, we, are, we are moving on that. Uh, GZA uh, is our, is our engineer, water engineering company who we've been working with. Rich DeRosier is the hydrogeologist that has been the lead with us in the town. There is a team, a team was supposed to be on site tomorrow. They're still going to be doing a, a site visit around different uh, different properties in town tomorrow. And the plan was their uh, their team from New Hampshire were coming down tomorrow. But I, w I just received an email from Rich that due to a, a death in, in a family or something that they're not able to make it tomorrow. So they're going to reschedule, you know, soon. So you know, certainly send uh, them well wishes. Um, the other thing, <coughs> let's see, the kitchen. So we had our preliminary meeting on the kickoff meeting on the kitchen for the senior center as well as the HVAC and the generator, and that will be starting uh, mid January. So January 16th, right after or 17th, right after the the holiday, and we have a tentative completion date of May 31, but it'll probably be earlier than that. But that's just a date that that we put in there. Uh, but I do want to say that everything will, will be fine with this. We're, we're going to be making progress. The Resco uh, Construction is, is doing the work on this, and you know we have full faith in them. But the only downside is there is some lead time on the generator, and that's a, I think it's almost a year out. So we might have the pad in place, mm -hmm. but we might have to wait <laughs> a little bit for that generator to get here. So unfortunately, that's just the way the economy is right now and the supply chain is. So. Um, but everything else should be in. There's, there's a couple other things that we may have to wait for, but the bulk of the work will be completed on time. So we're looking forward to that work getting kicked off. And also uh, Brownstone Avenue, as I mentioned before, we, we did hear back from DCD. We have that soft award of $500,000. And uh, ECR is continuing to truck out all that uh, old contaminated soil. Uh, to that Pla Plainville location for uh, you know treatment, and then the clean fill will be coming in shortly, and then they're going to compact that, and that will complete this phase of the remediation. So uh, we're excited to get that completed, and that's coming uh, soon. They're working very quickly on that now. So that's, that's what I got. We won't get it in the end of the year. <laughs> okay, I have a um, heavy. Every uh, commission I, I uh, follow uh, did meet since our last meeting, so bear with me. 
Um, I'll go through quickly. So um, the first one is Park and Rec. Um, you know, after any of the events we have that are sponsored, you know, they had their conversation about what improvements can be made in terms of the tree lighting. And uh, so they had that discussion. Overall, they, you know, talked about how successful it's been, and that's good. So they'll talk about what they can do for the future. Um, Little League did come to the meeting. Um, what they're looking for is to be able to, um, is, is to be able to sell sponsorships to businesses so that the businesses could advertise on banners on the, uh, on the, f on the outfield fences at the, baseball, at the uh, new recreational complex. So um, we're in the midst of, they were in the midst of discussing, you know, what, what do we want to, what are the guidelines that will be provided in order to do that? So I don't think it'll take long to come up with the guidelines, but that, that was a first good conversation with regards to that. So, so they're looking at that. Um, and the other big thing was that um, there is an Eagle Scout project, and as always, they've been so helpful to our parks and the projects that have been done through the Eagle Scout projects. And uh, they're looking to, there's one um, Eagle Scout looking to add uh, new tables to the new rec complex. So he's, he's working on the details uh, to go with that. So that is very good. Um, we certainly know one of the things that came out after the park was finished that uh, some of the things we had to drop out, which is uh, tables and benches. Um, now we have an opportunity to be able to have these type of projects that can backfill and do that work and, and maybe also discuss um, maybe setting up in the future something in terms of how you could donate and provide some of these type of features. So that would be a further uh, discussion in the future. So that's Park and Rec. Uh, with water and sewer, uh, uh, Ryan already got a couple of the items. I guess the only thing I would add is that uh, come to, it's always at the end of the year, you're always trying to see how you did with regards to the balance of using MDC water versus our, our town well. And um, they're very happy with where they stand coming in with the last couple weeks of the month that they were gonna be very close to hitting the number they want to hit to minimize the cost to the, the users in terms of how much water that they get from MDC, and it, they're they're close to being on the mark. It's not an easy target, but they're very close. The only thing to add is that the the well town well continues to still be on the lower side. So you realize, even though we've had a good amount of rain for a while now, after a very dry summer, that uh, it still takes a long time to be replenished when you have these droughts situations. That's water and sewer. Uh, with regards to EDC, a couple things to note there. They certainly also did kind of a, a look at on how the, uh, the events happened the other uh, sun when we had the tree lighting because there were businesses that opened. They had reached out to businesses to see if they would be open uh, a few hours before the parade and the tree lighting. And um, it was good feedback coming back from the businesses on that, so that's good. Um, Couple of things they are looking to put on a survey to the businesses to get feedback from the from the businesses in terms of what you know what they see and what would be helpful and what the, the uh, EDC commission could could offer to the economic uh, for economic support to the businesses. Um, and the other thing they were talking about is which we had before was a business recognition recognition program, and what they're doing to look at is trying to restart that. We've had it. it had stopped, so now, um, especially during the COVID situation, <laughs> um, so they're looking to reestablish that. Uh, libraries next. They uh, spent a good amount of time. I didn't make that first meeting, but they had a meeting to talk about what was the budget that they will be, that Jan will be putting forward um, from the library. Um, there was some talk about it, uh, people that I guess I, I in fact I asked Jan if it was okay but Jan is planning to retire next year and so um, the board of the library board of directors are working on trying to determine how they go about uh, replacing her so there was discussions about their activities around that um, they did talk about hoopla is one of the big 
uh, tools that in terms of allowing people to get to material online. So they um, continue to see the cost of that to go up, partially because overall costs, and second because the the um, demand is growing. Right. So they spent some time talking about that. They determined how they could get through this fiscal year and. I'm sure what she's putting forward in terms of a budget will try to support what will happen the next fiscal year. And they did have um, discussions about two policies. And I, I, I think, I believe the first one, which had to do with, give, in light of some of the situations that have gone on in some of the communities around us in terms of questioning what types of materials are purchased by the lab, library to be allowed to the uh, community to use or look at. Um, they, dem they did amend their existing policy with regards to their material selection. And uh, they did um, make that change. And the second policy they had looked at was about doing any recording or photography within the library or at library events. Um, they're trying to just uh, make sure that there's policies in place so if anything comes, in, comes into play with someone questioning what pictures should be taken or whether they're just, you know, in, in general, even if they're distracting a program that's going on, you know, they have some policy to back up if they have to stop one, stop someone that may be disrupting a program. Um, that one, they're, I don't think they approved that one. I they're, they're gonna take a legal look, I think, at, at it first, but. So those were policies they took a look at. That's for the library, and the only thing I'd add, the last one was Long Range Capital, which met this week, and a couple of the big things there was um, talking about and preparing for um, one of their, their part of the process and the budget is to talk with all of the heads of the departments and take a look at what are the key items that they would like to see on the Long Range uh, Capital Plan, and so they're lining up those meetings in January and they talked a little about the timelines and whether we should make shifts to the, the timeline that has been used, if we could shift it to make it a little uh, more accommodating for them to be, for their feedback to be more productive in terms of the overall process. So, and I think uh, that covers them all. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Ralph. A lot going on with uh, our boards and commissions. Uh, does, do any other selectmen have anything under status and committee reports? Um, the only thing I have for the school facilities committee, mm -hmm. we don't meet again until March because they have a meeting with the state in February. <coughs> uh, planning and zoning met. Uh, they had a lot of approvals, which is a good thing that it shows that there's going to be development and stuff moving forward in town. Uh, one of them was for Burdon to build a new building. Uh, so I think that's great. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a lot of work down there. Uh, all right, so we can move on to uh, Board of Selectmen, general inform. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Public comment. Another public comment? Anyone? Uh, yeah. Oh, Don. Uh, thank you, Don. Uh, Don Gouin wishes everyone happy holidays and stay fun and safe. Thank you, Don, you as well. All right, happy holidays. Um, Anything else? If there's nothing else, we'll move on to general informal discussion. Uh, Bobby, do you have anything this evening? I have a few things. Uh, when we talked about the rumble strips, do we have those on 66 going through the ledges? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. When they put those in, then they lit it, and that's really reduced the amount of accidents we had there. Okay. Um, I was looking at, because we had an uh, email <coughs> with some updates on the boards. I know we list like who was on the board and who replaced them. Mm -hmm. Can we update some of the, or remove some of the older changes? Um, can you pass along so I can see what, what you mean? Well, there's someone on here, they resigned in 07. Well, yes, <laughs> so this is our um, subcommittees. Yes. These are town committees. So uh, it's not, these aren't charter. Mm -hmm. These aren't charter committees. These are committees that the Board of Selectmen creates. And because of that, there's no, there's no terms to, to these. Yeah. So because there's no terms, 
um, there's no way to to tell when someone started and when someone resigned, and mm -hmm. so that's what that's why you see this here, and you don't see this on the boards and commissions page yeah. because every every time the term ends, it, the information you know recycles. Yeah, because like I put it like on here, I'm still listed on planning and zoning. Mm -hmm. Because the term still exists, right? What's yeah. the What's the end date on that, that term? Um, till next December. So then, in December of uh, 2023, that will go away, and then a new a new one will start. But it's important that we show the history on that mm -hmm. um, for for a number of reasons. But just to see who served uh, for minority representation purposes, mm -hmm. and also just so people know, you know, the history. Um, so I don't, I mean, I do, I do see your point that, uh, so, so one of the things is, so take the Clean Energy Task Force, for instance. It was created by the Board of Selectmen in 2004, and everyone uh, who got appointed to that board, uh, or that committee, I should say, uh, they don't have an end date. So they serve until they no longer wish to serve, and then they would resign. Yeah. But but that ter they don't have a term to, to remove. So <coughs> if you're saying you'd like a cleaned up version, yeah, that's what that I'm saying. Takes because away, you who know, cares somebody that somebody resigned from the board 15 years ago? That's, that's true. That's true. Um, we, uh, like, actually, let me see. Yeah, you're still looking at my notes? <laughs> uh, no, I was just looking at uh, some of the. Uh, I mean, it, it, honestly, if, if you, Ryan, or if the town hall wants to keep that substantial list that's fine but if we could just have it's it just, I, mean, up I think it's easier for someone that looks it up on the website yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing to them you see the cross out you're yeah. seeing all these people that resigned 15 10 5 years ago mm -hmm. you see the and full history yes right. yeah. yeah yeah as opposed to uh, I, I understand the recent ones like <clears throat> this person resigned or or mm -hmm. left in the last 6 months mm -hmm. but it's yeah so I can talk with uh, Michelle compiles this, yeah. and, and so I, I don't think that would be a problem. I but I, with the boards and commissions, oh, with, with I don't this, think you no, can it's, do that. it's looking at that. There's so many names on there <clears> town. that it can be confusing. Committee page. Okay, I will uh, <coughs> get to that. Okay. Hey, along that same line, while we're just talking about that situation, <laughs> I know Ryan, you and I, just a reminder. I know I, I brought up the thought that you know we've had all these committees that work towards the building of the park and um, unfortunately because of COVID and then losing our director like mm -hmm. we had talked about having some sort of recognition for for those everyone that worked on the park there was a lot of people that worked on it and they should be recognized mm -hmm. and then we could probably uh, look at whether we well I guess they're still on the list too. there's well that all was these committees I wrote there. on there so, remove with a question mark so I, now I mean, that it's turned over to the town, is the committee still needed? It's not needed, but we do need. I agree with Ralph. We do mm -hmm. need to yeah, recognize yeah. the right. committee. Yeah. So I, you know, this is a reminder. So we note it. Mm -hmm. We work Thank towards you. doing yeah. something. Maybe uh, I don't know. Just a thought. Maybe have um, the plaque that you know, and then invite everyone who was a part of that to a board of selectmen meeting to to just <laughs> read read that I, or. <coughs> do a site visit, but oh, that reminds me. I owe you a picture of it. Um, yeah, it, it we could certainly just to recognize. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get we don't have to bring the yeah. plaque, but or, yeah. and it's harder because we're heading the winter again. Yeah. That was the plan. We talked about having yeah. some sort of a right event there and having people whoever was involved that's still around. Some people have left the area but are still around to come to it. So at some point, like if we could just do that in the next few months. Because they worked hard and they should be aware that um, you know we finished the park, we recognize them on a plaque on the wall on the concession building, but we should let them know. Even like some of these that like shows it's in, inactive since 2020. Is that is it inactive because we were in COVID that it's going to come back? Is that the beautification? Town, the town beautification, yeah. Uh, that, that could come back. It, at the moment, it's currently inactive, but it could it could come back? It was uh, that was a great it was a great committee, um, but uh, right now they haven't been meeting in, in a couple of years. I think COVID did play a role in right. that. They had some some members move out of town as right. well, yeah. uh, but certainly uh, that's something that uh, they did some good work. So maybe maybe we can revitalize it at some point. Um, what is the 
Town Projects Review Committee. Has nobody on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's an older committee. No, so I it think was, it was I, created I, in I, September of 2021. Oh, it was a discussion right. that the, you know that was something that was brought up on one of the last meetings that that Susan had. Um, that they talked about having that committee formed, and then there were no members, right? There's no members listed, there's right? No there's members. nobody on it. And then it was something that we'd pick up with, and then, I mean, nothing happened. Yeah, so well, it, yeah. Do you know what it was supposed to be, like what they were supposed to do? Well, I think we were, you know, they were working out the details of what they saw in terms of what the role would be. And it just, it was one of the last meetings. I don't, we didn't, we didn't discuss it again in that, is the last of it since you <laughs> <laughs> don't bring it up today. So one of the things that that committee was supposed to do was, um, and what we did instead was our, uh, we have a dedicated riverfront access committee. That was mm -hmm. one of those projects I think they were going to be working on. So rather than, you know, have one committee to look at a number of projects, I, uh, I, we, we, what we've been doing is having specific committees with focus, focus group, right. mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at spe specific things. I mean, we could, we could, you know, place people on there if, if we wanted to, um, but I'm not sure right now with, you know, what. It, what it doesn't make is. sense because we have a committee for each project we have going on. So if why it, would they it, overlook it, it, another if committee? If things are working. They yeah. seem to be working. I mean, why it's would we want to call that? That's why I circled it. I'm like, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> that's the definition of too much government, having a committee look at a committee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be curious, I have to look back at the minutes just to see what the discussion was, mm -hmm. what the intention was. It, w it was but created. The intention, the, the intention at the time made it resolve itself. No. Oh, here, John, it was created on 9-22-21. I'll look so, it up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was a discussion on some of the senior people that are very active in the committees being part of this, <coughs> um, but they're certainly involved with a number of the projects that are involved in town. Hmm. But then it never, we never discussed it beyond it, that. And it just so. sounds, I mean, from us discussing it here, it sounds redundant of let's get a committee to look at committees. Yeah, we'd have to look. I don't remember the specifics of it, um, <laughs> how it differentiated, but. Um, yeah, we'd have looked the notes on that. Okay, enough on that. I think we got that one good, Bobby. I think, well yeah, that Bobby, Bobby you in-depth yeah. okay. review today. <laughs> thank, thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Um, do we know how the food bank is doing? They're doing really well. I'll be there tomorrow morning at 8.30. They're very busy uh, preparing for uh, the Christmas holiday. And uh, I spoke with uh, Ruth Mayo yesterday, I believe, and... You know they're they're very busy. They've been they've been working hard they're, and kind of money. You know they they are getting donations and. and uh, uh, could we get an update after the holidays? How they're then? doing? Yeah. yeah, just to make sure that they're where they need to be. Sure. And that Sean, thanks. That kind of tagged on to what I was going to ask is, related but unrelated, the status of the, the plaque. I have not the heard on the plaque, but it, the one that we ordered was going to take. It, Two to three months, I believe. Yeah. So, but it's it's being made as okay. we speak. Yeah. So, I, once I hear back, I will let yeah. you guys and know. And we'll, we'll, we'll move out quick. How on. We yeah, it. I know because I know that the volunteers at the food bank uh, want to be, you know, there and wanna present be part that of it. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah, want them to be able to okay. do that. Uh, yeah, because uh, <clears throat> as we all know, Ruth certainly uh, and Nunzi certainly yeah. deserve that. Uh, anything else? No, that's it. Um, anybody else? Nope. I have one thing that I wanted to run by you guys. Uh, so one of the things that's come to my attention recently and is, and I'm wondering if we potentially could have an ordinance to address this. Right now, it, a lot of times in town, you'll notice people put out things um, outside for free. They'll put out like a couch. They'll put out something to uh, to take um, and. So what happens sometimes is someone will put out, let's say, a, a couch, a sofa, on a Friday. It'll be nobody will pick it up for a couple of days, and then Sunday it rains, and then and, it sits there forever. And then it sits there forever, and the people who put it out don't do anything with it, and then it becomes the town's responsibility mm -hmm. to take that and to bring that to the transfer station. And right now, there's no way for us to charge the owner or the person who put that there for for that so essentially we're 
we're bringing someone's trash to the right. for free to the Would transit. that somehow fall on? Don't we have a blight ordinance? I was going to say, shouldn't that be that? zoning enforcement? There's, it's, but it's kind of hard a lot of times to determine yeah. if their apartments who you know who it is. But I think that there's a way to to you know make a policy where uh, we want to encourage people to you know yeah. still be able to put out things. Mm -hmm. But but it, if but be you guys, responsible for it, yeah, yeah. But but be responsible. Or if something's left there for weeks, and we and the town has to remove it. Uh, I feel that the town should be able to, you know, recoup, bill. you know, bill for yeah. that. And right now, we just don't have a vehicle in order to do that. I, so that was something I wanted to get y your thoughts on before I, you know, started. I think it makes sense. I just don't know what what avenue would be best. Would it be zoning enforcement? Or I think it would be with public works. Public I think works. it would be because they're the ones that would be taking that, you know, and and bringing that to the transfer station and. So, um, because then you get somebody else involved, you know what I mean? You'd get our building official involved or something. I, I don't Maybe think you could do something where prior to them making the pickup, they could send a letter to the address saying that, you know, this has been out there. If it's not picked up by such and such a date, the town will pick it up, but there'll be a fee associated and be billed to you. Exactly. You know, yeah. And that give them the opportunity to clean it up themselves. That would be, yeah, exactly. So right. something something <laughs> like that could be worked into, yeah. you know, a possible ordinance. But I, I think it's it's not a big issue in town, but there's been enough times where you guys but have all seen it's, something. It's better to cut it off before there is a problem though. You need yes. you need an ordinance like we did last year with the with the uh, mailboxes, the snow plow damage, because mm -hmm. we didn't have anything, so you need something there so we can go back on it because right. mm -hmm. there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that happen that we think we have ordinances in town but then when you research them we don't when we should mm -hmm. and i think this is uh one of the things that it makes sense right now cut it off before it's a problem yeah. Yeah. I'm, so i've, been, I've yeah. been watching a dresser in the neighborhood <laughs> that's got wetter and delaminated and just kind of coming apart and it's been there for weeks <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's i've been meaning to yeah. pick that one up <laughs> 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 so uh, I'll work. I'll work with Ryan O'Halpin on that. Maybe yeah. we'll get a. Pot. And I'll, I want to reach out to uh, other towns, see what they do as well. And then mm -hmm. I'll get you. You know, we'll come back at some point on that, and I'll, you know, then we can. Further and I know, you know we, with stuff that we've had in the house, my wife goes there and said, "There's a Facebook, local Facebook page." Mm -hmm. you see, I I took out replacing my windows in the house. She put something up there and said, "I have old window sashes." Somebody responded in 10 minutes and took every one of them. They were making a little greenhouse or something. They wanted them, but there, I, what I guess what I'm saying is there are ways we can reach out and find somebody before you even throw it on the curb. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. then, then you know you're getting rid of it or you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll look into that, yeah. but thank you. Um, and so just before we close, I just want to wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, a Happy Hanukkah, however you celebrate the holidays. and. Um, Looking forward to continue, continuing to work with you all in 2023. Mm -hmm. Great. To you as well. Right. Ditto. You, uh, on that, I guess I'll make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> thank you. And right, I'll second you. that motion. Thank you <laughs> both. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Have a good night. Yep.